Yeah, so John Quincy Adams was Secretary of State. John Quincy Adams had a big role in the in the um, in Florida. Yeah, and he had a big role in that compromise. That was a big part. He was a statesman. John Quincy Adams, fucking fascinating guy. I yeah. read his biography. The thing about him and his father is that they wrote copious, really long diary entries, so we know a lot about those guys. But um, he was he traveled with his father to England. He's a, he was like the last link to the Great yeah. Revolution. Yeah, because he was with his father wherever he went, and he took him to. Uh, France. He ended up being a diplomat. He was the first um, American uh, ambassador to Russia. He lived in Saint Petersburg, Russia, and him and his. Oh wait, was he the one who helped them kind of revolutionize? I don't. Or was that before? Remember that? that okay. I mean, but he was in Russia way way back then. He'd take like a sleigh to to you know countries that aren't there anymore, like Prussia. And uh, uh, he was he traveled all over. He traveled more than any like human being back then. Yeah. And he went across the ocean several times. So like something like 12 times back and Jesus. forth. Now, An his amazing guy, his incredible a, guy. His opponent was Jackson in this election. Yeah. Jackson dominated one. He won the popular vote by a greater margin than Reagan beat Carter. It was a landslide victory for him. But Jackson in the Battle of New Orleans, came out and said all the guys from Kentucky were being fucking cowards. What? So then when it comes to the Electoral College, the guy counting the votes happened to be like a senator or something from Kentucky. What? And I was like, fuck this guy. <laughs> and he just swung like 10 states. Because back then, back then, the Electoral College made perfect sense. Nobody in any state had ever heard of one of these guys. Mm -hmm. There was no news. There was no fucking anything. Now, you needed somebody. Yeah, you needed super delegates. You needed to, to it, just get things. your local guy yeah. and be like, you, you go. go. You go figure it out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But that was enough for this guy to swing all these dudes in the meetings to be like, dude, Fuck Jackson's me. a fucking dickhead. <laughs> we need John Quincy Adams. So he swung. I mean, it was. It was John Quincy moved. Adams Cowardly was another moved. nerd, one term nerd. Yes. Who just couldn't get. I mean, as a president, he couldn't get. And he got. Almost nothing done, partly because Jackson and his people yeah. just thwarted every single thing Jackson he tried. Had, the whole country loved Jackson. Everybody fucking loved that dude. <laughs> he was Trump. so much. He was Trump. He was Trump. He was, <laughs> imagine if Trump like dueled as yeah. much as Jesus. Christ. Jackson died yeah, Jackson with dudes. something like twelve <laughs> bullets in his body. Yeah, what? That never left his body. He dueled all the time. Yeah, let's just go straight to Jack Jackson. He's the next Wait, president. Wait, just he, he can't not be mentioned, John Quincy. JQA. Yeah, fuck John Quincy. John Go Quincy ahead. Adams, well, after his presidency, he was in Congress forever from Massachusetts. Yeah. He died at his seat what? in Congress. Wow. He died in at his desk. He was made because his thing, he was a huge abolitionist. He was like the only guy in the Congress willing to be an out and out. The slave states had so much power that they passed a law a gag law that said you can't say the word slavery in Congress. Well, there yeah. used to be, a, there was a thing in Congress back then called <laughs> petitioning. You, anyone could send a petition to their congressperson mm -hmm. and they had to say it, they had to mention it. So like you could send a thing to Congress saying, um, I oh, want nice. all, you know, I want retards to be allowed to drive, whatever you would do. <laughs> want retarded people to have driver's license. Yes. And he would say, he'd have to go, okay, the petition from Shane Gillis, <laughs> he wants retards to honorable. drive the honorable and everyone would go i move to table it and then they just table <laughs> it <laughs> but they passed a law saying you couldn't even you couldn't even mention a petition that said the word slavery because that's how electrified that it was like we don't want anybody we know you're trying to get rid of slavery we don't even want you to say and they passed it so john uh, uh quincy adams would do it and he would just break the law and he would just say it over and over again, he would read petitions about slavery, and he would get sent. Then they would all vote the whole Congress to censure him for going against the rules, and he got censured over and over yeah. again. And he he uh, represented the Amistad slaves and got them Holy set shit. free. Yeah, did what? you know that? No. Yeah, he was the the slave ship that was taken over by slaves mm -hmm. and was grounded in Massachusetts, I think. Um, so you were saying the S word? He got in trouble. Yeah, he got not only in trouble. They came. <laughs> Those slaves asked him to represent that he was their lawyer what? because they were all they were Virginia slave masters who were waiting for they were Haitian slaves that they were waiting for that they had paid for. But he found a way just with it wasn't like a slavery is wrong trial. It was you yeah. guys don't have a receipt. 
trial. It was like you ain't got the paperwork. Go fuck yourselves. So they were nice, so they were dude. free. In February of 1841, John Quincy Adams argued that the Amistad slaves were actually free men. He argued that they were illegally captured and sold into slavery, and therefore they had the right to return to Africa. The Supreme Court ruled in favor of the captives, which meant they were free to return to Africa, which they did. John Quincy Adams remained a vocal opponent to slavery, all the way up to his death in 1848, when he suffered a stroke at the U.S. Capitol. But oh. he, but yeah, he died. He was in the middle of a big impassioned argument. He was yelling, and he had a heart attack, and he died right there with the, the whole Congress around him Just watching because him. they loved and people loved that guy. Yeah, Whoa. he was a great guy. He was the first president or former president to ride on a steamship, and he used to ride on the steamships with a blanket over him, and folks would surround him. All the passengers would surround him, and just he would just tell stories. And he was a great guy. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. I didn't know. I didn't know any of <laughs> There's just a part of me that liked Jackson. Jackson's great, but I mean, I mean, and again, to me, I'm I re- I, I look at all these guys. I evaluate them as characters. They're all mm. great, amazing yeah. characters. They all did awful things, of course. Yeah, but uh, I mean, Obama fucking bombed, you know, fucking weddings. Obama, <laughs> <laughs> Obama. Yeah. But uh, but but uh, yes, Jackson was a crazy, but shrewd. A great yeah. thing about Jackson was that. His part, his inaugural party in the White House. Yeah, uh, this is wild. They 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 stormed he, the Capitol. He invited everybody. <laughs> That's exactly right. They he invited them. everyone. He said anyone that wants can come. Uh, no no invitation needed. It's the people's house, and the oh the house God. was crammed with common people getting drunk, getting stealing shit, shit face, destroyed, and the they wouldn't place. leave. And there's a there's a honor code in the White House. You don't ask someone to leave. You don't ever throw anybody out. So they couldn't get them. Like, days went by <laughs> where people are shitting on the floor <laughs> and raiding the fucking <laughs> pantry and just fucking people and whatever. What? And so what they did was they got huge kegs of beer and they put them on the lawn and they nice. said, "Hey, come out. Let's let's drink under the stars. Let's have you know." <laughs> and they invited them out for beer on the lawn, and they all came outside and they locked locked the doors. <laughs> <laughs> that was how he he was a he was a people's president. Yeah, like he was there the was first some populist in his the um, first yes. guy. Yeah, first one to appeal to the common person. Yeah. There was an author of uh, English guy. I read his bi- uh, biography of him, and they have one account of an uh, English. A uh, traveling writer who would write travel logs, and uh, he was in Washington, and he thought, "What well, is it like? Can you meet the president?" And he just why there wasn't a fence around. Yeah, the house people then. just could walk in, and so see he him. just walked to the front door and he knocked on the door, and the, a butler came and to the door and said hello, and he said, "I'd like to meet the president." And he's like, "Is he expecting you?" And he goes, "No." And the butler's like, "All right, well, come in and sit down," <laughs> and he went in. The guy waited like twenty minutes, and Jackson came out of his office which was like full of people and he said i'm in a pretty important like who are you yeah and he said i just wanted to meet you and say hi and he was like all right can you wait an hour <laughs> and he's like sure so he went and whatever fucking signed a yeah. thing to kill all the indians <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then he came and had uh sandwiches brought and he sat with the guy and just talked to him for an hour damn damn he also went he was the first president i think to write on a on a real like on a train he took a train he was the first one to do this that he went all over the country yeah he went came up to he went up to maine presidents never travel he was the first guy to do that like he thought people should see the president people should have contact whoa with the president the trail of tears he he flubbed that one yeah flubbed he He nailed a bit of a (laughs) (laughs) flame he did do exactly what his goal was what he tried to do (laughs) fucking flubbed that was a bit of a flub no he was not he didn't make mistakes i I looked it up i don't know if you they had slaves it's yeah yeah. the fucking dudes on the trail of tears they were like we got to bring our slaves if slaves are available folks get slaves that's just the way that goes i couldn't believe it but when when he was peaceful that's what the part you don't hear is like the indians are like you know what he did to us and what he did to our slaves yeah our slaves had it real bad on the trail of tears tell me about it yeah but didn't they like share everything with their slaves though (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they were yeah, way yeah. better. They were like real peaceful. It was a Galatarian, dude. <clears throat> they were some no, of those he, good slave owners. He, uh, the natives. Andrew Jackson signed the Indian Removal Act of 1830. This act led directly to the Trail of Tears, during which 100,000 native people, mostly Cherokee, 
were displaced and 15,000 of them died. There is some story from the uh, some chief, big chief went to uh, the White House to meet with the Jackson because Jackson was very honest. Yeah. He didn't underhand ever. He didn't play politics. He did horrible things, but he just went ahead and did them. Like there was a slave revolt during his presidency where they took over a fort. The slaves took over a fort and just said, we just want out. We just want to be taken to the north or Canada or whatever. And so he just got a bunch of cannons and just he just lit the whole place and killed them. Bombed them. He didn't fucking care. So some famous, uh, like a name you'd recognize, it wasn't like Sitting Bull, but it was some big, uh, all of the Indians, the tribes, all the tribes chose this guy yeah. to negotiate with uh, Jackson. And he went and talked to Jackson, just the two of them. And he came out crying and said, <laughs> what? We're He's not, like, we're in trouble. Yeah, he we're says, we're not. He, this is going to go bad. Oh, this is going to go bad. No. no, he was, he just had his way of thinking about how it was going to yeah. go. He's like, no, we got to clear these guys out of here. Also, in line with Trump, he was like, this is where the term mudslinging starts. Yeah. It was him and John Quincy. Their election or their debates and shit was, he would just talk, they would talk shit. They would be nasty rumors oh, in the papers. Whatever it took. Yeah. Whatever it took. Jackson was the first president. To go like, uh, fuck you! I'm I'm winning! I'm yeah. winning this! I don't care what happens to you. Jesus. We're, we're gonna we're gonna you know. So um, he also one of the big things with Jackson. He was the, he vetoed more bills than every president before him combined. Nice. He hated the banks. He he like went to war. It's crazy. That he's on the twenty. Yeah. It's like a joke because he hated the idea of a central bank. He hated the idea of a treasury. He thought that it should just be folks have their yeah. money, you use gold, and you trade, and he wanted... So I think know. the U.S. bank at the time, I think it was called the United States, like the Bank of the United States, was up for re to be renewed. Mm -hmm. And he just happened to be the president, and he vetoed it. Yeah, and it was a thing you don't veto. It you wasn't can't like, veto it. No. But he he vetoed it. it. So then the next guy, we'll get to him, is his vice president, Van Buren. He takes over. Mm -hmm. He takes over a completely destroyed economy. Because he vetoed the bank. <laughs> that's the that's the way it goes. Yeah, the yeah. cool guys. Yeah. America is made of cowboys and nerds. So yeah. you got cowboys who show off and who show what kind of people we are, and then you have nerds who actually get things done. But the cowboys get the credits. Yeah. And then ner nerds get fucked every he time. He got fucked. His nickname was Van Ruin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He had a lot of nicknames. <laughs> They're like, Old Kinderhook. This. He yeah. was another total nerd, and everybody hated Van Buren. He was like a little fucking... Yeah. He was supposed ugh. to be, I think, he was one of those vice presidents that was supposed to be a link, like, because Jackson was the man in the South, kind of, or wherever, and mm -hmm. they were like, let's get this dork to... He was know. from uh, he was Kinderhook, Pence. New York. He was his Pence. Yeah, yeah. He was oh, Trump's yeah. Pence. Yeah. He was... Uh, the, the, the legend is that, you know, he was one of the first people to have... Uh, um, pamphlets like a lot of pamphlets like the, the press like the mass press started to get big so his pamphlet was because he was called old kinderhook because he's from kinderhook new york so his thing was okay and there was oh, a check mark Oh, nice and that's where people say that okay comes from what yeah because it was like his thing was okay with a check mark that was the point it was like vote for old kinderhook Whoa. That's the thing. That's the thing. When you look into this, that's where all of our shit comes from. Yeah, that's nuts. It's all of this. Uh, <clears throat> and somebody <laughs> shot at at, at um, uh, Jack Andrew Jackson. Yeah, he got and, and he uh, had a cane and he beat the guy, <laughs> beat the shit out of the guy. I almost beat him to death. <laughs> the guy shot shot him and he just get the fuck. It was right outside the the Capitol. <laughs> what? Like by the big. Uh, pillars or whatever yeah and he just beat the fucking <laughs> shit out of him shot. he was in insane so that's all as far as the podcast goes but to close the video off with i have some interesting facts about both the 1824 and the 1828 elections so during the 1824 elections andrew jackson actually got the most votes 150,000 compared to adams 108,000 votes however while Andrew Jackson largely stayed out of negotiations with members of Congress, John Quincy Adams actively sought their votes and even had a private meeting with Henry Clay, the Speaker of the House. On February 9th of 1825, John Quincy Adams was elected president by the House of Representatives. Soon after Adams' inauguration, Andrew Jackson's supporters called Adams' win the corrupt bargain. In 1828, however, Jackson would get his opportunity to get his revenge. The elections in 1828 went a little differently. Personalities and slander played a large part in the 1828 election. 
there was news of Andrew Jackson's proclivities for dueling and gambling, which became embellished and widespread. The so-called mudslinging was just as fierce from Jackson and his supporters, portraying Adams not only as a corrupt bargainer, but also as a dishonest aristocrat who had misplaced many tax dollars. Eventually, Andrew Jackson got his revenge and became the seventh U.S. president by beating John Quincy Adams. Now that was all for today. As always, all links to Man of Shane's secret podcast and their socials are down below, so definitely go and check that out and show them love. Now if you like this video and you're interested in history, please consider subscribing and I hope to see you again in the future.